Today I'm going to show you how to use the PCA9685 to drive multiple servos with your Arduino Uno. I'm Tom Kovicek and this is Tom's Trains and Things. We're going to do another Arduino project and this is a little bit more advanced than the Arduino Made Easy. So we're going to put this in the project folder on my webpage. But we're going to talk about this little gizmo right here where you could drive 16 servos. It's a PCA, and I always have to look at it, 9685. And that's this little chip right here. It was originally made for LEDs. You could drive 16 LEDs on here. If you don't know what I2C is, and a lot of people call it I2C, it is a way that you could use two wires to control multiple devices. It's clock and data. And the best way to remember it on the Uno is it's five o'clock somewhere. The clock goes to A5 and the data goes to A4. And you can also see on the end here you have a SCL and SDA at the very end. Those that is your clock and your data pins on there also. So these two pins over here are connected to these two pins back here. So that's just an extra place where you could put them. But anyway, let's look at the diagram right now. When we hook this up to our Arduino, we're only going to use four wires over here. We're going to use the ground. We're going to skip the OE. We're going to use the SCL. That's the clock. We're going to use the SDA. That's the data wire. And we're going to use the VCC, that's the 5 volts. You can use more of these PCA 9685s. All you have to do is jumper these terminals over here to your next one. And since the address on here on the first one is defaulted at 40, to make it 41, all you have to do is solder this one here. And I have a chart that I'll show you on what different configurations you can get if you need to do more than two. But I'll put the credits up there of who printed out this uh, chart for me. But anyway, the four wires here, and if you want another one, you just go on and put your jumpers. You could uh, solder the wires directly to there, put pins on it, however you want to do it, and go to your next device. And when you do that, you have to change the address of the second device because this one is defaulted at 40. And then you can change the next one to whatever number you want, depending on what pads you solder. And this is the three pin plug. The center pin is your power. These pins right here are your PWM pins, as you can see right there. And then these pins right here are your ground. So with the servo, you just plug it in there and you're all set. And this one is address 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if you wanted, so if we wanted to put four different ones on here and we wanted to just, you know, put one here, one here, one here, one here, just to keep the, the, the plugs separated, we would use 0, 4, 8, and 12 in our sketch to identify which plugs we're using on this device. To get the driver for your PCA9685, just Google it and you'll come up with a page similar to this. And this is what you want to go to right here, Adafruit 16 channel 12 bit PWN servo driver. Click on that and that shows you Adafruit's version of it, which is about 15 bucks. You want to come down here and click on data sheets, Eagle CAD, PC, PCB files. You want to go to Arduino driver library. Click on that and that'll take you to GitHub. You click on this little green button that says clone or download and click on download zip. And it'll show, it'll come up like this. I already have it on here so what you have to do is click on save. I'm just going to cancel it out right here. Okay, well, so we'll come over to 
hit include library and we'll come over to add zip library see right there and it'll bring up your Explorer okay now and all we do is click on open library added to your library so what we'll do is come over here go to examples and you can see PWM Adafruit PWM servo driver library as you can see I got a lot of servos hooked up to this in fact one two three four six altogether right now just because I was playing around with the, with with some of the sketches that I have and just trying out different things on there but what I have right now as you can see on this servo right here I have it going in uh, increments from the minimum and maximum and I'm going to show you how I came about that it started out with a sketch from Adafruit so it starts out with the servo minimum and servo maximum and the thing thing that is different about this on with the PCA 9685 is instead of having angles on there like we did when we hooked it directly up to the Arduino we're using pulse width modulation on there that's what this PCA 9685 does it gives a, a pulse width on there see it says this is the minimum pulse length count out of 4096 so the minimum and the maximum is 150 and 600. I'm going to shorten this up a little bit for you because I went and I already did my tests on there and I did it the same way that I did with the, the servos going directly on the Arduino Uno. And I came up with the minimum of 110 and the maximum of 510 get that right there 110 and 510 so that part we don't have to go through and basically you set it up the same way and the way I did it over here was I did driver drive minimum and this is how you set it up pwm dot set pwm and then you put the servo number and right now I have number one running this first one over here is zero because that's hooked up to the first connector and then this one is hooked up to the second connector which is uh, number one the center zero I'm not sure what that is I'll have to read up on it a little bit further and then this is the uh, PWM setting right here so what I had it set up with is servo minimum and then I have a, a function right here for servo maximum and that's what I used to get the range of the minimum and maximum on there now I'll come down a little bit further and here's what I'm doing right here now here's the loop and for integer angle equals zero angle less than 181 now I'm using I'm converting over into the angles again and I'll show you where I'm doing that in, the, in this map function right here okay so integer pulse equal map and then my angle we're calling 0 to 180 and servo minimum and servo maximum so we're mapping the 0 to 180 for the minimum and maximum that I had further up here on this sketch that minimum and maximum right there so in effect 110 becomes 0 and 510 becomes 180 so that's how we're working this thing right here now we're putting in steps of 15 degrees and that's what you're seeing here every 15 degrees it's going it's stopping and moving on to the next one so and this this tells us that we're using uh, servo number one 
and convert to angle and angle. So we're coming over here, convert to angle, integer my ang, which is angle, and that's going to be the angle. So, and you can see I'm using a serial print right there. So we'll bring this up and we'll show you what it looks like. So you can see I have the angles right here. Well, actually the angles are right here. And here's the PWM settings right there. Now what I did was I took a look and counted how many times it stopped to see where it would be close to where the tortoise switch machine is. So one, two, three, four, five. So around the fourth one on there. So that's how we get to the first one. And we do the same thing for the high limit. So you, you see on there, one, two, three, four, so 243. So we play around with that, but that says 60 degrees right there. So, you know, that's a starting point right there for us to work with. And, you know, and we can narrow that up or, you know, close it up a little bit later in, when I show you how to do that. That's how we determine what, what range we want that'll get us into a close uh, proximity of where we want to be in our travel for throwing our turnout. I'm using the tortoise switch machine as a reference of where approximately where I want that arm to be. Okay so let's go on to the next sketch. Now I have my other one hooked up and you can see on this we have button state 1 equal digital read button pin 1. What that says is it, it's going to read whatever position this button is in. So if this button is like this, and that would be normally open, then it would be low. But once I press it, it would be high. So when I press it, you can see there on it says there PM, it goes to 370. That's the high part of it. If this part right here is no longer true, then this part right here goes into effect. So it would switch it over to make the throne one high, just like that. So basically what we do is just read the, read the button state. Let's get this over here like this. And depending on what that button state is, we'll either do the, the top part of the if or the else. And then it's, you know, it'll switch back and forth whenever I press this. Okay, and let me show you something about the, the uh, switches we have. Now, I'm using a push button. But you could use a toggle switch like this. Now, what I have right here is a on, off, on switch. So it's, you know, on on both sides and it's a center off position. It has three pins on it. You can use just a regular toggle switch that has two pins on it. And one way is on and one way is off. You don't need the one with the center off position on this, on this one right here. But I didn't have any uh, switches like that for this demonstration right here. So... Uh, you'll you'll find you can find these switches anywhere. You can get them in Amazon. You can get them in any electronics store. Now you can use a number of different servos on here, as many as you want. You can get 16 on here, but if you do it this way right here, you're using three pins for every servo for the uh, LEDs and the push button. So you can get as many as five on the Uno. But if you have a Mega, you can get a lot more. I think you can. there's 30 extra pins on the Mega. So you can get almost all of the, I think you can get as 15 
all together on one of these boards right here. Right now I have this set up on my Uno. You can see I have a green light on it. I have the tortoise switch machine here for reference and I already did this off camera to get the the range of the servo on it to match what what it is on on the uh, tortoise switch machine. Let me put it over here so you can see a little bit better. That's the one end and that's pretty close to where the travel is on there. And we come over here to the other end and you see that's pretty close to where the travel was there. I mean, you, you would have to put your figures in at when you have all these things mounted on your layout for your turnouts. But anyway, I have an indicator on there. Also, I have the uh, three pin, two color LED right there. And as, as I use the push button, the push button is normally open right now. And when I push on it, it's normally closed and you can see it changes to red. So you have the green going one way and the red going the other way. You can also use two LEDs on there if you like. You just hook them up because I have it on pin 4 and 5 right there. And actually the servo part of it only takes up two pins for your PCA 9685. But what takes up most of the, the uh, space on your Uno is the put is your switch and your LEDs. I just changed this over to two separate LEDs. I took the uh, the three pin by color LED off of there and you get the same results out of it. You have your green one and then your red LED. On this demonstration today I gave you the basics of how to hook it up so you can get your turnouts working on there. You can use these servos on there with the PCA 9685 so you can get 16 servos all together. You hook it up to your Arduino and you, you, and you could uh, operate them with a little toggle switch like this. The only thing is, you know, it's like I said before, it, it could be just an on off one. Not, it doesn't have to be one like this. It's, preferably it would be an on off because all you need is normally open and normally closed. We're going to have a lot more Arduino projects coming up and we're going to be doing some on stepper motors. The stepper motor with the controller, with the control board on it. So take a look for that in the future. And we still got the Rock Creek back here that I have to finish up and the building lights. So we'll have those coming up also. So until the next time, we'll see ya.